I link them up. So again, if you are don't have the software to do the um, paper, you can log in right there, Microsoft Office 365. It's under the portal. So I guess we go to West Valley, go to portal, scroll down. Here it is, student email. This The college will provide students an email account through Microsoft Office 365. So Office 365 is just basically like you're using the word that we have in class, right? So you should have access to all the software you need to complete what we do in class. Right here. Oh, they even have it for your phone, Outlook for your phone. I don't know. I have no idea. Okay, so everybody see that? Let's get back to Canvas then. Okay, again, um, we're in week five. Whoosh! Can you imagine how fast life goes by, doesn't it? What's going on? All right. I'm going to start Excel today. At least talking about it, uh, how much we'll do. Depends on how far we get. So again, here's the final information about buying a paper. We're going to go over that kind of quickly. If we get through most of that, then we'll start Excel. If we don't get through all of it, then we won't start Excel. Remember, you got a maker's discussion as well. I talked about that last class, right? Remember I discussed that last class? I think I did. Uh, and then uh, here's the quiz. It starts at 1.15. It's not open yet, I don't think. Internet marketing info, I think I posted this. It's basically, I was planning my marketing class and I figured this is good technology that you could learn. So if you ever wanted to know how content is shared over social media, that's what this video is right here. If you have time to watch this video right here. I'm not gonna play it in class. But again, it, it explains how the technology behind when you when you share something on social media, right? You like a website and you're saying, "Oh, I like this website." You go to your Facebook and you hit a you you want to put it in Facebook and say, "Hey, I like this site." This shows you how or why they came up with that concept. It's called Open Open Graph Protocol. Okay, it's a way that social media shares data, like on Twitter, right? You want to share a web page on Twitter. This is how it's done, okay? So the reason why it's here is not necessarily for, you know, this is just general information for you, but I teach a marketing class, and in that marketing class, I go into detail about how to prepare your content for that. This class, we don't do that, but in my marketing class, I go into detail about, you know, you need to prepare your text this way, your photos this way, you're there. My marketing class starts next week. If you want to sign up, BMIG 25B. Just pointing that out. But you might want to learn what this means. It's important to us. Uh, later on, we'll learn about sharing also, something called an RSS feed, which is a way that data is shared through news feeds, right? News feeds. And we'll actually do a lesson on RSS feed. Uh, so that was some internet marketing. Oh, and there's also a funny video of the week. We already saw that. If you haven't seen it, you can watch the member of the kids here. And there's another funny one. You know, kids learning about technology. And old stuff, old technology. And then here, you turn in your major paper right here. Again, it's 100 points. Turn it in by, look, September 30th, which is Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And don't try and do it again like at 11.55 or 11.59. It tends to get overwhelmed. In addition, if you don't remember the last two classes, they're right here. I record the classes. This is the talk about finishing your paper. Remember I talked about how to do a table that doesn't have borders? It's right there. You can watch the video all over again. And then last class, we did a bunch of stuff in Microsoft Word, all the things you wanted to learn in Word, right? It's right there. So you can go back and watch them again later. Okay? 
So they're right there. Videos from September 20th. and I even put the dates on there. So you know what day you were here. If you missed class, you go back and watch it again. Okay, let's go. We're going to go through the final computer info. Just a couple more things, making sure you know how to do that. Uh, there is a website that you might want to go. So the first time we were, we were looking at um, websites to buy, we went to the Apple website, right? Then we went to the Dell website, right? Which is good. They have some pre-made computers, but what if you wanted to really make your own kind of computer from scratch? They do have things like this website called PC Part Pickers. And in the PC Part Pickers is where a lot of gaming people go here because they want to be able to pick the, the video card that they want. The um, So let's just talk in general so you got your last info for buying a computer paper. Of course, the things that you should be putting in your comparison, right? Let's write this stuff on the board so that you know. So what would I include in my comparison? So what are some of the things I would include in my comparison? Maybe uh, uh, so what type of computer, right? So remember we did in my comparison table we did what? Mac, book, box, book, book, pro, and then we did a what? A Windows Surface, I think it was. Or no, we did a Dell. It doesn't really matter. You get the idea. You should list in your thing, your computer that you're gonna do. What are some of the other things I would list? Okay, I might list the, um, well, you know, your comparison table should look like that. You would size maybe, right? Size would be what? You know, this would be 15 inch. You know, this might be 17 inch. Uh, what else would we list? Um, processor. And then you could just copy and paste from the website, right? You could copy and paste from the. the from the Mac website, right? They had the i7 processors, whatever. You can list that. And then you can list the amount of RAM as well. RAM, right? And so when we talk about RAM, remember on the test, you don't be weary. The biggest number might not be correct. Remember, there's megabytes, gigabytes, and kilobytes. Which one is bigger and which one is smaller, right? Terabytes are bigger than gigabytes. Gigabytes are bigger than megabytes. Megabytes are bigger than kilobytes, right? So just remember on the test, don't, the biggest number might not always be. Look at the, the digits the, or the letter count that you need, okay? So most computers, you would need at least eight gigabytes of RAM. It's a, probably the minimum I would buy today. If you could, 16, you'd be four at the Think about that. So I would list the RAM, uh, hard drive. So the type of hard drive might be, you know, the, probably you might want to list how big it is, right? 500 gigabyte, 500 gigabyte SSD if it's an SSD. What was SSD stand for? Solid state. Solid state drive, right? Okay, so you should list the size of the hard drive. What else would you list in your list? Maybe some peripheral maybe connections. Uh -huh. Bluetooth. Bluetooth or Wi-Fi enabled, right? So you would have your connections. I'm just going to put I'm going to put connections here, and then you can put how many, right? It might be better to have three USBs than one. So you might list, you know, um, the USB whatever, and so on, and then um, so connections, hard drive, RAM, processor, size, so these are the kind of things I would list in my thing. So let's look at the, let's go through buying a computer here at this website, and we'll see what else we can put in there, okay? But these are kind of the most minimum stuff that I would include in my comparison, okay? So let's go through. They actually give you pre-made ones here. You'll see them. So entry-level gaming computer, 506. Enthusiastic Intel gaming build right here. And so they give you that. Oh, and RAM. You might want to put um, the video card if it's a special video card. So they have complete builds, build guides, system builds. So they got these sort of pre-made ones here. 
And if you go to complete builds, it's going to show you somebody built this computer, and you can buy it too. Look at this. $6,193.07. It has the new Intel Core i9 processor, the GeForce 1080 Ti, and, and so they show you who built it and things like that. But you can also go over here and filter how many want to see computers that are less than uh, $1,300. And then they'll show you ones that are less than thousand three hundred dollars. And this is totally fine. You say, hey, this might be kind of cool. But again, look at the process. AMD. We didn't really talk about the difference between AMD and Intel, did we? Well, you know, really the difference might be in 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 software that you might get or anything. But you know, they pretty much run Windows as well. Um, these are all AMD because these are like gaming computers, right? And so on. El Cheapo. Look at this. $554.68. Uh -huh. So again, um, you know, you can click on one and then it'll give you, it tells you who made it right here, right? And then it kind of gives you an idea of what all the parts are. Okay, over here. And then you can, and this is in, in pounds too. As you can see, it's in pounds too. So that's a little bit different too. Uh, you can go over here to system build and you can choose your own. So on this website, you could just go through and say, hey, I don't, maybe you don't know, but you could just try, you know, what is a liquid cool? This is a PC cooler. There's some computers that have liquid cool. Choose a motherboard. So you can choose what you want there, whatever processor you want. So, you know, maybe you want the i5-7. You can add that, okay? And then you come down here and you can choose the motherboard. Then it starts putting things in there that, you know, this one's a, a maximum RAM. Look at that, 64 maximum RAM on this motherboard. Wow. wow. It has four slots. Wow. Maybe I don't have that much money. I might go with this one. Okay. Warning, these parts have potential issues and compatibility. Uh-oh. I thought they would only list that. Then you can choose the amount of memory you want. Right. How many? And and one thing when you're buying memory, you got to have the same amount of memory in there. So two times eight equals sixteen. One times eight equals eight. Right. And so on and so on. So we'll go with that one. And then uh, you can have more memory. Choose your storage right here. You can choose your own storage if you want. You got your Western Digital, Seagate, Samsung. These are people that make data. Uh, look, remember the SSD drive again. These are going to be ones that are going to that's are going to be a little bit lasting a little longer because they don't have spinning parts. Where look at this one. Remember we talked about RPMs and how the hard drive spins, right? And so you want one that spins at at least 72. I don't even see any here that that spin any slower than that. Oh, here we go. Look, see these ones are really kind of slow, and it might take a data in. Well, of course, look, it's less money though. You know, so. Um, I don't know. I think the SSD. Then they also have hybrid, right? Did you ever hear of the hybrid hard drives that are part SSD and part spinning? They call them hybrid. So part of it spins and part of it's SSD. And the SSD part of uh, that is usually the operating system because they want the operating system to be faster, right? So that's sort of it. So you can choose what you want, okay? And then you can add more if you want. Choose a video card. Now this is important for killing demons, right? The more memory you have, usually the better for killing demons, right? I don't know. And then there's texture. I don't know. My son, he does all the. He's, he keeps telling me all these these stats to me. Oh, look at the texture rate or the frame rate and all the texture, you know, texturing that it has. I don't know. Anybody build demon computers? You guys don't build demon computers, demon killing machines? I don't know. He knows there, there's ways to measure these. You could do some research into which one's best for gaming if you want to do gaming. You know, kill, but of course, the killing demon machine usually has a lot of money. Uh, this one looks pretty good. I don't know. It's four gigabytes of RAM, uh, and then there's a cross clock speed on there. So I might add that one. That's a good killing demon machine there. And then a case is the box. That's just a box. You can choose a power. We'll go with a cheap box there. And then of course you have power supply. You need one that's that's gonna give you enough enough oomph. For all the parts, <laughs> usually 650 watts is enough. If you want a disk drive, remember the optical drive, right? 
And how do we spell disk with optical? D-I-S-K or D-I-S-C? C for optical. Remember I wrote that on the board? And K is for magnetic, right? Remember D-I-S-K for magnetic. So if you want to drive, I might want a Blu-ray drive so I can play some Blu-ray disc. I don't even know if they even sell Blu-ray discs anymore. I don't even know. Everything's streaming now, isn't it? Choose an operating system. Of course, we want Windows Home Edition at least or Windows Pro. I don't know really the edition. Why? Usually, in the old days, the Pro version would have certain um, certain um, database capabilities and so on. Um, I don't know what the difference is now. Anybody know the difference between Pro and Home Edition? Maybe networking? Okay, I, I don't know. And then there's software. Oh, and if you want a monitor, what do we want? We want at least 1080p, right? And that's at least, that's like high, that's high definition right there. 24 inch high definition monitor for 274. That looks pretty good. And uh, anything else? No external drive. You, oh, we need a network card. We got to be connected to um, a wireless. Choose a wired network adapter. I need that for sure. And I need um, so I can plug in my cable if I want. And then um, probably have a wireless one too, so I can connect to Wi-Fi. What was that? This one. And wired and wireless. Yeah, I get both of those. And then uh, what else do we want? Well, that's about it. So look, I custom made my computer. I could probably kill some demons with it, and it's one thousand four hundred eighty-one dollars. That's about a price of a decent home desktop computer, I would say. Uh, you know, the thousand-dollar ones and less are usually, you know, great for if you're not killing demons and you're just surfing the internet and stuff. If you're going to play games or you're going to watch movies on it, right? Notice I got the 24-inch screen. You know, maybe it's in my bedroom and I want to watch uh, Netflix or watch that. No, I don't watch Netflix in my bedroom. No, I don't have TV in my bedroom either, I know. Never, you know, bedrooms are sleeping, not watching TV, right? I sleep. I sleep. Okay. You get the idea for that. We're ready to move on to something new? No. There's a video on RAM. I don't know if we need to play that. Here's a video on video cards or what kind of monitor you want. Here's some other places you can buy. You think you got enough knowledge to do your paper then? Yes, you're all cool? You ready to move on? Okay, we're going to go to, uh, we're moving on. No more word. We're going to Excel. We'll talk for about 10 minutes. We're just going to talk in general about spreadsheets, maybe a little history. And in about uh, 15 minutes, we start to test. You do the test and you go home when you're done, okay? If you don't finish by the time you, I leave, usually at 12, or at 220, 225, whatever time I usually run away, it's okay. It's open till midnight, yes? 33 questions. They're worth three points each, 99,999, you want 99 points, okay? When you're done and you hit submit, it'll tell you your grade. If you miss a question or so, you can go back and do it again. You have multiple tries. Okay? You do as many times as you get 100%. You got till midnight. Okay? You can do it multiple times. I want you to, you should get 100%. I want you that way. You can do this. You're learning from me talking and me talking to you. You know, when you come here and we talk, well, you learn more from that than taking any tests. I'm telling you that. Okay, let's get into uh, next week's stuff already. Okay, so uh, we're kind of done with Word. And it's not like we're going to never see Word again. We're going to come back to Word. Okay, but in this case, uh, we're going to start what we call spreadsheets. Okay, so the term spreadsheet refers to a piece of software, usually business software, that is used to analyze data. The most important thing about a spreadsheet software is the ability to take the data that we input in it and pull information out. Business people love that, right? They're, they're very good things. Well, they want to see the data, how much something costs compared to how much I have in my inventory, and then bring out a chart in there and see what that chart is. So one thing that really drove the, um, the personal computer was the spreadsheet software. Word processing and spreadsheet was like the most important thing that had come along. This was way before the internet was even 
well, the internet was there, but before the World Wide Web part of the internet, you know, people were doing things on computers. They were just kind of doing them themselves and sharing them <laughs> with floppy disks. <laughs> okay. So let's look at the uh, starting spreadsheet right here. Okay, so what is a spreadsheet? And let's look at that right there. A spreadsheet is an interactive computer application for organizing, analysis, and storage of data in tabular form. Spreadsheets are developed as computerized simulations of paper accounting worksheets. The programs operate on data entry in cells of a table. Each cell may contain either numeric or text data for the results of formulas that automatically calculate and display a value based on the content of other cells. A spreadsheet may also refer to one such electronic document. So there's a lot of terms. One thing to keep in mind is it's done in tabular data, which means, of course, you have rows and columns. And it's different than a database. Now, a database is very similar in that usually when I put something in a database, it goes into a tabular form. But the difference really, the difference between the Excel and a database is scalability. Right? When you go to make something in Excel, you can see if you have an Excel and you have multiple sheets and so on, you can do some basic things like maybe some of the, let's say, some of the accounting that we do at West Valley, how many classes do you have? Right? West Valley offers maybe like a couple hundred classes every semester, right? So the administrators here, they get down how many people in class, and they can do that in Excel just fine. But what if you had all those students and you need to keep track of where they're where they live, have they paid their tuition, you know, have they done all these other things, you know, and you want to compare that data, right? And you want to see all the students that live in this zip code and so on. A database would be much better for something like that. Excel is great for just you know small business-like things, but for large, 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 you use something like a database. And, uh, we will talk about databases. I used to use examples. We used to do databases in class, but we had Windows back then. I don't know. We don't really have. We might have some cloud databases and so on. I don't know how you know, people did databases and so on. But the software I used to teach on databases is called Access. And Access only works on Windows. And maybe I'll teach it on Windows one day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't know how I'm going to teach you about databases, but we will we do cover it. I do somehow we'll get to it, okay? But you know, Excel was great, but it's I would say for smaller amounts of data, not big big data. Um, again, the most important thing about a spreadsheet is also the ability to take the data out into chart form. We will go over how to make charts. We'll also talk about what is the best chart for the type of data you have. Do I make a pie chart? Do I make a bar chart? Do I make a line chart? Do I make a scatter chart? All those different charts or all those different data analysis depends maybe on the type of data that you have inside of Excel. Uh, let's see what else we got in here. Let's talk a little history here because you know me in history. I love history. Uh, let's see where are we at spreadsheet. Where's the history here? Oh, here we go. Um. <laughs> okay, here it is. Vizcal, Vizical, or whatever you would say, was uh, invented in 1997, and it ran on the Apple II. And then, of course, there was an IBM back there in 1981. Spreadsheet commonly came out as well. Um, in fact, um, so, you know, it took the spreadsheet. It was a very important, and as you can see, you were able to calculate data very quickly. Right? You got your tax in there. You got your products in there. How many products you have. Yeah, it was very important to the business world. In fact, IBM used to do, in, you know, a spreadsheet was very important business machine. In fact, IBM had their own operating system back then. They called it the PS2. Anybody remember those days in the 80s? The IBM PS2. It, it was a commercial. Yeah, 
Oh, okay. The PS2. Um, you know, and then so, you know, after that, there was the other one, which was probably the more, more important one, was called Lotus 123. It was for the IBM computer. IBM Lotus 123 came out and it dramatically changed the Lotus 123 1982. Okay. And it was able to drove sales and PCs. Okay. And of course, Vizcal was on Apple and Lotus One Two Three. Um, Lotus One Two Three was made in, in Boston, I guess, I believe, somewhere. I uh, forget which company um, in Boston. Um, then, of course, the one that we use today mostly is called Microsoft Excel. Microsoft released the first version of Excel for Macintosh on September thirtieth, nineteen eighty-five. Woo. Some of us probably weren't even born yet. They imported it to Windows for the first version being number 2.0, synchronized with the Macintosh 2.2 release in 1987. Excel made it possible for Excel to take the market share from Lotus. By the time Lotus responded with usable Windows products, Microsoft had begun to assemble their office suite. By 1995, Excel was the market leader, edging out Lotus 1.2.3 and 2013, IBM discontinued Lotus 123 altogether. You know, IBM tends to be a little bit behind the, the, the curve sometimes when it comes to things. You know, it, it, they were a little behind in the cloud computing, but they cut, sort of caught up, I think, a lot. And, you know, IBM is really, really staking their future on Watson. And I think they've done a good job about that. If you don't know what Watson is, we'll watch some videos a little bit later about Watson is, but Watson is the future of IBM. It's machine learning, right? And they're making machines that can learn, and they're doing it very well. And Watson is incredible. I know some people that work on the Watson team. And it, what's coming out and what IBM is coming about in the machine learning is incredible. Okay, where were we? Uh, Excel for Macintosh, blah, blah, blah. There we go. Web-based spreadsheets. Of course, there's some web-based spreadsheets. One of the downfalls, of course, is in, in like Google Sheets and things like that is, you know, they're good, but, you know, they're not great. And they're not compatible because since everybody's still using Excel, you know, it's sort of, sort of compatible with so many other things. So, you know, I, it's it, it just makes sense that a lot of people are still using Excel for their main spreadsheet software. But as you can see, there's a whole bunch of them here. You can see a whole bunch of free ones, numbers, and um, you know, it's, it's, it's a main important concept. How does a spreadsheet software work? Of course, you have rows and columns like any other. You'll notice that you have letters that go across the top. And you have numbers along the side. When you're referring to the formulas, and we're going to be making formulas in the program, we refer to the column, the cell, not the actual number in here. You don't use the number. We use B1, B2. It's like bingo, right? Okay, it's like bingo. Okay, it is. It is like bingo, right? Because you're looking down and across. You don't win anything in bingo? I don't know. I've won at bingo. Who's won at bingo? You guys never win at bingo? you got to get lucky. I was in Florida one time, and I was playing. They, they were giving away bags of oranges and bags of, of, of grapefruits at, at the bingo I was at in Florida one time, and I, I won a giant bag of oranges. Yeah. But the, 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 the beach in Florida was nice. <laughs> Okay, so, you know, that's a little history. Uh, here's a little history as well. It talks a little bit about the killer app was the spreadsheet. Okay. Yep, it was a killer spreadsheet. And then uh, here's an article that says, yes, 
Knowing Excel, yes, Microsoft Excel, is critical to making more money. Right? Everybody, every company wants you to know at least a little Excel. You should be able to at least deal with it and use it in a functioning manner. And that's what they're talking about here. Yes, Microsoft, you know, Excel is one of the most important business applications. You, you should read this article. It's kind of cool. Right? And... Whenever I whenever I interview somebody for a position, I always ask them if they know Excel too. I use Excel a lot, specifically for Google Analytics. Okay, when I am using Google Analytics, I pull the data out of Google using Excel. It, the, Google gives you that format. Do you want to save this data in Excel format? I say, yeah. Boom, I click the button, boom, it sends me a spreadsheet. I have all my data. You know, how many people came to my website? What did they search for? You know, what day? Are they using a mobile phone? Are they using a computer? Are they using Windows, Mac? What operating system are they using? Google knows everything about you. You would be amazed on how much Google knows about you. They know everything about you. And so when I do marketing, I use Excel to pull my data out of Google. And so, you know, it's another really reason why to learn Google is that, or to learn Excel is that, you know, a lot of the data that you're going to be sharing and using amongst business people will be in the Excel format as well. Uh, and what is Excel? Uh, of course, remember you got free Office 365 here at the school. Okay, turns data into insight, enhanced by intelligence. Excel learns your patterns, organizes your data, and saves you time. Create spreadsheets with ease from templates and on your own. Perform calculations with modern formulas. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a bunch of different Excel examples. Um, you got free templates. We'll look at some of those. Um, Of course, we have Excel 2013, Excel 2010, Excel 2007, and even Excel 2003. Whoosh. The one we use now in class is Excel, what, 2016? Yeah, I know it's 2018, but, you know, I think what's on these computers, is it on, what is on these computers? Is it Excel 2000? Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, 2016. Probably by the time we teach this again in the spring, they'll come out with something new. I don't know. They keep changing on me. But they're throwing me back into Fox Center, which has Office 2016, 13. So I'm going from 16 back to 13. Yeah. Yeah. They're kicking me out. Okay, again, uh, we'll start Excel um, next class. The first assignment is that we're going to uh, do your GPA, grade point average assignment, on Tuesday. Okay, so um, we, we just make it up. We're just learning the basics of the program, how to do basic formulas, right? how to calculate your grade point average. I know how to do that already. So we'll put the formula in, then we'll then spit it out. Then we can do, um, we can even do some if statements if we're very um, ambitious. Say you know which one has the highest uh, um, grade, so on and so on. Just things like that. It depends on how ambitious you are to do those things. All right. So again, if you look at Excel, it's pretty much like Microsoft Word, but it has it has the ribbon that goes across the top, right? See the ribbon, and then you have um, all the normal font kind of stuff that you have. The biggest difference is, of course, you got all the data that you need as far as formulas and things and so on and and so on. So you have all kinds of different formulas in there. You got a whole formula. Look at all that. Look at all these formulas. These are easy. We'll do these, actually. We do all of these next class. We'll do these ones. Some average count numbers, max, min. We do these next class. But, of course, you have a lot of business formulas under financials. You probably learn all these in your accounting class, right? No, some of them you learn in your accounting class, right? Uh -huh. There's a lot of very important formulas there. 
logical ones will be using if then kind of things if statements to say if this data is above a certain number then do this we do that then we do uh, I don't know what text is uh, I don't know we do some of that what is this one date and time of course we want to put that in we use the today function we'll be doing that on uh, Tuesday as well and then look up references this is a comparison way of looking up things as well where you compare things and that's what the lookup is is where you're comparing things we use specifically the V lookup a lot to look up what the V lookup does is it looks at a group of data and then you ask it a question and it spits out a certain amount of data uh, what else you got math ones if you want you got your cosine tangent and all those uh, uh, trigonometry ones and some and all those and then uh, engineering ones look at all these I don't know what all these are I don't use all of them but I'm sure these would be good for you if you are in calculus right no anybody in calculus very good okay calculus is hard okay it's time you can go take your test now when you're done you can go home 115 it's open so log in the canvas there should be a button that says quiz one remember you can use your notes you can copy and paste the question into Google hit submit and see what comes up yeah why not Remember, if you don't finish the quiz, you got till midnight to turn it in. Remember, your paper's due on Sunday night. Did anybody find it? It should be open by now, no? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's up. Hold on. Okay, yeah, that's good. Remember, if you miss something, go back and do the whole quiz over again and get the right answer. You can take it more than once. Make sure to review your grades as well. If I'm missing something that I didn't grade for you, some things I might not have graded yet. No stress. If you miss some stuff, it's okay. We can just talk about it. You can come and turn it in later.